Good evening. The bitter battle between Labour and the SNP has spilled over into a standoff between some of Scotland's biggest councils and the Scottish Government. Today, after failing to reach a deal on teacher numbers, one of the SNP's flagship policies, the Finance Secretary John Swinney ordered councils to meet their targets or he'd claw some of the money back. Well, the row emerged as MSPs gave final scrutiny to next year's spending budget. Our political editor, Brian Taylor, is at Holyrood Forest. Brian, is this really about teacher numbers or about power? Jackie, it's about money and it is indeed about power. In the first term of their office, the Scottish Government used to talk about a, an historic concordat with COSLA, the Convention of Scottish Local Authorities. Well, tonight that concordat is just that. Its history. This is a standoff between SNP ministers and big council leaders, often from the Labour Party. Let's recap on what's happening here. Uh, last year, the, the number of teachers went down and the, the ratio of pupils to teachers went up slightly. John Swinney isn't happy with that. He reckons he takes the hit for it and he says he'd supplied enough money for that not to happen. This year, he wanted a deal again for the year ahead, 15 16. He wanted a deal again to say that if money was supplied, councils would guarantee to maintain teacher numbers. He put £41 million on the table. He offered an extra £10 million, which was published today. No deal. Um, some of the councils are unhappy with the idea of ring fencing. They don't want to be told what to do. And some of them say that maintaining teacher numbers, that maybe isn't the best way to improve education in Scotland. But it's caused an absolutely huge row. In a statement in the last uh, few minutes or so, the Cosler president, David O'Neill, said he was outraged and appalled and accused this uh, uh, John Swinney of central government diktat. He was the exchanges in the chamber. John Swinney first, then Jackie Bailey. This government has no alternative in order to protect teacher numbers and to deliver the educational standards we want to see, but to make that funding available on a council by council basis if and only if they are prepared to sign up to a clear commitment to protect teacher numbers. One local authority said it just wasn't enough, that the amount they would receive and it wasn't a Labour-controlled local authority, the amount they would receive doesn't even cover the advertising bill for new teachers. And Brian, all of this comes within the context of a Labour Party which is pretty rattled by poll ratings. Yes, it is indeed absolutely the case. Uh, MSPs tonight backing that budget, but a row over that uh, money for education, a row over the extent of health spending, and as you say, a controversy over opinion polls. Lord Ashcroft, the Tory peer, has been uh, canvassing opinion in 16 Scottish constituencies, mostly in areas where there was a significant yes vote in the referendum, and guess what he found? He found that perhaps 15 of those 16 seats would go to the SNP. Now, caveats here. These are polls, not actual elections. They are a snapshot, not a prediction, and, and Lord Ashcroft himself is stressing that. But here's my colleague Glenn Campbell with the details. Despite losing the independence referendum, the SNP and their new leader don't look like losers. Party membership and opinion poll ratings have soared. Ahead of the UK general election in May, the last four Scottish voting intention polls suggest the SNP enjoys, on average, 47% support. That's compared to 27% for Labour, which won an overwhelming victory last time round. In Paisley and Renfrewshire South, Labour's majority over the SNP is in excess of 16,500. But will all those who voted Labour last time do so again? Well, I think the politics are changing. The SNP seems to be running Scotland in the moment, but I would like to think it would be overturned eventually. But I'll be Labour to die. I decided to go SNP because I feel that they're more in touch with the people and what it's needed in Paisley. A poll of a 1,000 voters in this constituency in January suggests the SNP's ahead of Labour here, with the local MP Douglas Alexander, the shadow foreign secretary, at risk of losing his seat. This survey, carried out by the Conservative peer, Lord Ashcroft, was repeated in 13 Labour-held seats in areas that voted yes to independence, and from Dundee West to Western Bartonshire, in all four North Lanarkshire constituencies, and in every Glasgow seat except North East, the polling suggests the SNP is ahead of Labour with three months to go to the election. The Scottish Labour Party is well behind and there's a big gap to close. But the only people who will be happy is David Cameron and the Tories. 
because the biggest party gets to form the next government. Ed Miliband is toxic in Scotland and the Lib Dem vote has collapsed right across the country. The only pro-union party that provides strong leadership for the United Kingdom is the Scottish Conservatives. <laughs> Liberal Democrats like Danny Alexander have cause for concern too. The Ashcroft polling suggests the SNP's risen from third to first place in Mr Alexander's Highland constituency and moved ahead in Gordon. We've had great predictions in the past of Liberal Democrats being uh, wiped out of not winning. and We've always come back to win on almost every single occasion. The SNP have just six MPs and tend to get squeezed in Westminster contests. So might that happen again as the election draws nearer? The SNP could have big clout after the election in a hung parliament scenario and we'd be in a position to make sure that the Tories don't get into government but that Scotland's voice is heard. In the aftermath of the referendum, Scottish politics seem to have changed. By how much? The election results will reveal all. Glenn Campbell, Reporting Scotland. Well, Brian, this poll suggests a big swing. What's your analysis? Yes, it is quite a, a remarkable poll, although, of course, we have to stress the customary health warnings and caveats are attaching to them. I mean, politics is determined, electoral outcomes are determined by a, a miasma of, uh, of elements. But one thing that perhaps comes to the fore is, is the question of affinity. You know, which, which party do folk just generally, taking everything into consideration, reckons best stands up for them or uh, expresses their concerns? What appears to be happening, certainly one thing that is possible is happening, is that in post-referendum Scotland, people are still in a mindset where they are thinking about who best speaks and stands up for Scotland and in those circumstances perhaps the SNP is well placed to to garner votes what Labour Party and the others will be hoping is that the for this UK general election it reverts to a question of who is best placed to enter Downing Street now the SNP are stressing of course that their perspective is to stand up for Scotland particularly perhaps in a hung parliament their rivals are saying the question is about who becomes Prime Minister it depends whether that mindset changes between now and May. Thank you very much, Brian. And for more analysis on both the budget and that poll, tune into Scotland 2015 at 10.30.